mortgage debt, we had more unpaid mortgage debt than we did equity. Quite the opposite of today. And guess what? We had a ton of inventory. We had so many new builds. A lot of actual builders were giving away homes and saying, I'll throw in the kitchen. I'll throw in that gorgeous granite countertop. Just need you to buy the loan, buy the home, so we can get that loan off of our portfolio. So different from today. So are we going to have a mortgage crash? Not likely. Okay, so what does the housing landscape actually look like? Well, inventory remains at historical low, slow increasing. This is one of the bigger challenges within the US. We are, that really is a major challenge. But me at Freddie Mac, we get to solve for that challenge. So I'll talk about some solves on that today. Across the US, I wanted to show you a bigger picture. Now the blue represents actual inventory. These are locations where we can actually say, there's a little bit of inventory there. It looks great there. The red is our problem areas. And as you can see through this generational heat map across the US, coastal areas tend to actually have less inventory. And that is because millennials flock to coastal areas historically. And we'll talk about that because there are trends within these millennials migrating. So within those uh, coastal areas, what we are seeing is lack of inventory because they are taking, uh, they are being purchased. And those are the areas we tend to focus. But if you look within the middle of the US and that Midwest, we've got some inventory. We also um, can see uh, some of those Midwest states are actually quite fruitful when it comes to inventory. So those are the areas that we focus on, on when we see migration. With that, velocity of home sales remains high and it's pushing up prices. The demand is not going away. Our demand is so huge. It's actually historical. There's 71.2 million millennials out there. 50 million have not bought a home. There are some challenges within the US. We're gonna talk about those in a minute. Now, I mentioned migration. We've been following migration at Friday Mac, and I've been presenting on migration since COVID. Now, during COVID, we had an influx of remote employees. A lot of employees actually, of companies actually told remote employees, listen, you can actually work from home, or we don't care where you work from, as long as you do the work. And guess what? Millennials loved it. And they loved it so much that they packed up their bags and they exited strategies out of states. Now this exit strategy is called an inbound outbound state. And what that looks like is such states as California, as you can see here, one of those outbound states and they were feeding into so many other states, particularly Arizona, Texas, Alabama. That we have fed so many families out of these certain states that are deemed non-affordable into what we consider states that are affordable by price point. Now, the price point, the sales price point within California is $920,000. And that's quite high for us. So they are migrating inward. They love the Midwest as well. Migration is something we've been following. Now, a lot of a lot of uh, companies are telling their employees, you can't be full-time remote. You're gonna have to come and you know present yourself maybe one, two, three days. Well, millennials don't like that. So guess what? They are finding other jobs where they can be permanent remote employees. Keep that in mind because that's changing the buyer persona within America. They're migrating all over where they can find affordability, where they can find inventory, and they kind of got smart on us because they started doing this without us telling them, hey, migrate out to find inventory or affordability. With that, I've identified the 20 top hot millennial purchase states within America. Now, I do have to say, Texas is at the pinnacle point of this, and I feel like the migration into Texas, um, you know, has just been phenomenal. And no longer is great weather an impact for migration. So those Californians with that fantastic weather, that coastal weather, 
Yeah, they don't really care about weather anymore. They care about affordability. They care about inventory. Why? Because the oldest millennial is turning 42. The youngest millennial is now 25. They are fully immersed in the workforce. They are now uh, creating household generations. They're having children. They're married. They can't live with mom and dad. It's not sustainable. Also, rent. Rent now equates a mortgage payment in America. It's actually equivalent, and in some high-cost areas, they are higher than a mortgage payment. So please take that into consideration when you think of the U.S. Now, we did a really fantastic millennial study and survey. This is our second one uh, at Freddie Mac, and there's so much great information that we extracted from this survey. 54% of millennials want to buy a home. So the desire is there. In America, for the last 10 years, we've said millennials are not interested in buying a home. They want that experience of travel. That's not actually correct. They definitely want to buy a home. There's some bigger challenges within that thought. We're going to dissect that challenge. This is called a buyer persona. Within the study, we really dissected the buyer persona for the millennial. What is impeding them of coming to the housing industry? Actually, we've got a lot of really great information out of this. So, to better understand the buyer of the future within America, I broke down the three bigger buyer segments that we are working with. One of them is the Hispanic and Latino buyer. Hispanics and Latinos within America are going to be the majority, no longer the minority. And we have the millennial population. As I mentioned, the, the the age demographic is 71.2 million large. It's the largest age demographic in American history. Now, if that number impresses you, hang tight, because these Gen Zers are coming right behind these millennials, and they've got a really great uh, objective and persona about buying a home. They feel millennials waited too long to buy a home. I feel that too, actually. <laughs> and then we have our Black Americans, our African American population, who absolutely need to buy a home. And there are some challenges within all three of these segments. Now, some of the information we were fascinated by during the study is, where do they get their information when they're ready to buy a home? Now, why is that important? Well, I'll tell you in a minute. It's actually quite fascinating. Um, they go to family and friends. Now, in America, family and friends have a lot of stale information. Now, the people in this room, you are the subject matter experts within your own areas. And uh, guess what? Mom and dad, grandma and grandpa had really old information we're finding out through these studies. Some of these parents were telling their children, don't buy a home, you have student loan debt. In America, student loan debt does not impede you from buying a home. Actually, my company, Freddie Mac, has a really fantastic way of calculating student loan debt that is favorable to our partner and sister company called Fannie Mae. They are another government-sponsored enterprise. There's actually two of us within America. Now, uh, top homeownership barriers and needs. For the Latino population, they need to better understand how to shop for a good mortgage rate. Historically here, financial literacy is an issue within three, these three buyer demographics. This is America. Who are their favorite social media platforms? As you can see here, Facebook and YouTube. That should be your quick answer. Now, it all changes within age demographics, actually. So face, Facebook and YouTube is mostly for baby boomers and Gen X. However, we're seeing that millennials are very interested in Instagram. Borrowers still think they need 20 or even 30% down for a mortgage when my company provides a program as low as 3% down, a conventional conforming product 3% down, and in some instances with a very low mortgage interest option. One, the buyer of the future in America, the state of the housing market, and products, solutions, resources that are being created by my team at Freddie Mac. Thank you so much.